did I tattoo God's plan on my arm? Why did I tattoo God's plan on my arm and what does it do for me? And what can it do for you? More importantly, uh, when I got done with my skincare brand, right? When I got done with this, I went out and took a bunch of ayahuasca. I had kind of achieved a lot of the goals that I had been really setting out for myself. And I was in a state where I didn't really, I was in an unhealthy state back then because as a, as a kid, I was heavily neglected. This was something that I learned later on in life. In fact, I became this kind of attention whore. I was a middle child between two parents, my younger sister and my older sister. So I never really got attention as a kid until I fell out of a tree or I did something amazing, which happens to be the other tattoo on my arm. Didn't figure that out till later. And uh, so I started going down this rabbit hole of trying to do amazing things so that I would be get the love that I would naturally crave, right? I learned to go without love, like I don't need it, but secretly I needed it. But never, I never actually knew this stuff when I was 27 and I was chasing Lambos and chasing all these different things and chasing like the do something amazing so that people will love you kind of vibe, which was turned out to be a deep drive inside of me, the majority of my entire, actually the entirety of my career, kind of the deepest essence. I was really just longing to be accepted because I was heavily neglected. And um, then I started to feel, but I started to notice, you know, as you'd get the McLaren or you'd get the next cool spot or something amazing would happen, they would be super stoked, but it would start to go down. Like it was, I had a bucket that was just leaking holes at the end of the day. And I had heard from Craig Clements about an event called the Hoffman Process out in San Francisco. And I went on their website, Hoffman, and that video that they have there just really spoke to my soul in a big way. There's like an eight month waiting list in order to get into there, but it just really spoke to my soul in a way that helped me understand. I got to go check this out and I really got to go uh, explore what this is because I felt like a car driving towards a cliff at the end of the day, right? I was keeping going for these bigger, bigger things, but I knew it wasn't going to pay out if I didn't go out and kind of do this. So towards the end of my, uh, it, towards the end of my the skincare brand and towards the quote unquote kind of mutiny that ended up having me to sell it to my business partner. Um, I went to the Hoffman Institute out in San Francisco for seven pretty super intense days. And it was phenomenal. I gained so much insight and clarity. In fact, one of the ladies there, and I'm getting to the God's plan part. One of the ladies there called me out and she said, she said what my problem was at like the first day. And I didn't believe it took me like three days till I finally started to wrap my head around um, what she was trying to tell me, which was, you know, I was just massively seeking attention. I had become an attention whore. My ex-girlfriend was an attention whore. We were both kind of attention whores, kind of like narcissist kind of vibes, but I didn't really, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it. I didn't like that attitude at all. I didn't like that vibe at all, but I didn't know what to do about it. I would read all these books. I would try to fix it and nothing I could read would help me understand this. But as I got to Hoffman, we did all these different physically demanding activities and uh, just went deep down this rabbit hole of just bringing awareness to all of the habits and behaviors that's happened in their life. And that began to heal a lot of, uh, it began to move the, the fun, because I'm still, I have a limbo today, right? I live in a dope spot today. I live in a dope life. I'd much rather have a dope life than not a dope life. Um, but I do it because I love it today, not because I need it, which was a subtle hint vibe in the last kind of life that I was living out there. So, after that was able to evolve, right? And I was able to evolve out of this stage of like trying to do this stuff because I needed it subtly because I needed the love, you know, that was kind of it. Not instead of doing it because I love it, because I love it, totally different kind of energy you're doing there. Then I went and I had a little feud with my business partner. We ended up, I ended up selling the brand to him and I went to Costa Rica to go to ayahuasca. And this is where it really started to pivot because I had now achieved a lot of these goals and I wanted to create the most epic life uh, I could possibly live just to keep this train going. But I felt like I was limited by my own imagination. I was just limited by the way that I was kind of, you know, operating in life and going after it in life. And I went and take ayahuasca and I had this plan because I was like, I'm going to go here and I'm going to like brainstorm the next big business model or whatever. And then I just decided, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go find God. This is my thing because me and God, we've been ripping together for a while. You know, I had, I had my parents held me underwater till I became Christian when I was like, you know, born, right, basically. So I, naturally I spat that out when I was in my, you know, teen teens and I didn't really spat it out. I just gave up on it really. And just didn't really care about any of that stuff till finally the last book before my life transformed was conversations with God. And I realized that spirituality 
is actually what's going to make you the most money at the end of the day, I think, because you're all about, it's about bringing a vision of your life into the outside world, right? So that is really the core of it at the end of the day. So I went and took ayahuasca. I met God. You can read all about it on my blog. Just type in ayahuasca uh, slapped in the face with a miracle. And on that trip, I had a big profound kind of breakthrough, which was, you know, if the best life I could imagine is a 10 out of 10 life, then God's plan is an 11 out of 10 life. And I remember praying like, dear God, like I'm done with all this stuff I want to do. I want to do this for you. I want to rip with you and I want to roll with you as hard as we can. Like I want to live, I want to live the life that you want me to live. Like if you can imagine the best version of your life is a 10 out of 10 life, God's plan is 11 out of 10 life. And it's just way better than you could ever imagine. And so I committed my life to like just following God's plan and being a warrior for God, for this force in the universe that's keeping us all ripping and rolling and and giving us destinies and giving us challenges and calling us to evolve. I mean, I recently just got slapped in the face with like the universe calling me out to like level up my content here and like call me out by like leveling up my Instagram game and like getting back out there and helping people because I'm so naturally a go sit in the dark corner and grind and go make campaigns and not talk to anybody. But like the reason why I do that is to become a super uber successful guy even more that way the words i can say it is be more inspirational but why i've been anyway that's kind of like this long story that's been going on here um but your life the best thing that could happen in your life is being on god's plan for the longest amount of time possible it's about going furthest down the road that god wants you to go as far as possible and it's about going down that road as much as possible and not being afraid of hiding from it. You know, the universe is looking for warriors to rip with. The universe is looking for warriors to roll with, you know, and when I met Mind Valley, that was a super big, important piece. Now, right, this was so funny because I went and met God in, in, in Costa Rica taking ayahuasca and on day four, it was really funny. So the first day, it was four days. The first day I met God in person, you can read about this. The second day, I try to take her on a date, but it doesn't work. So I'm like, you know, you're such a badass. Let me work for you for free. So like, I'm going to work for you for free, you know, forever. I'm going to sign a 10,000 year contract to work with you forever. Um, and then day three, she taught me a bunch of cool wizard shit. And this is where, if you look at my Instagram, I t- literally turned into a wizard for the next few months, just like, cause I thought this was, that was hilarious. And then day four, she brought me to hell. I had this really hellish, terrifying, horrific, they're going to kill us all. The shamans are after us kind of vibes in day four of ayahuasca. But what day four ended up signifying was that, uh, literally on that trip, I had lost like a million dollars or $2 million because I wasn't checking in crypto. There was this monster crash. And then this, this, uh, God sent me basically straight to hell to go battle with this, um, to go battle with this crypto destruction that I was entering into, you know, this crypto phase, I yoloed all this stuff into crypto and it went catastrophically wrong. And, uh, and that was it. You know what? And you know why that happened? That happened because if I had the money, I would have gave up at Mind Valley. When I met Mind Valley, it was just, I had my back against the wall and it, the universe demanded to give me my absolute best to bring out the absolute best possible to produce these ads and find the ad that was really going to work for them at the end of the day. So, and then of course it blesses me from there, right? It was six months of a grind making campaign after campaign. You already know there's like 32 different VSLs we made long form for Mind Valley, And then we got them to crack. We got them to explode. And that was, that was really the kickstart of this whole thing. Kickstart of the whole life. Got to give a quarter million dollars to my parents living in this gangster house, driving an Aventador S roadster super badass car with a shark tooth noses and a wing on the bat the thing's fucking crazy anyway i wanted to just drop that to you i want you to think about and use this affirmation soon which is god thank you for making the path clear and easy to see don't please make the path clear just thank you for making the path clear and easy to see thank you for the big hunches don't do riddles on me god Give me clear, simple, kindergarten, simple directions on where you want me to take my life. And those directions and that kind of guidance is really what's going to give you the most amazing life you could ever imagine. Because at the core of it, this is about lifestyle design. This is about you unlocking the most fulfilling, incredible life you could ever imagine and becoming the greatest person you could ever imagine. Just because what the fuck else are you going to do, right? It's all about growing and contributing. Those are the only two ways that Tony Robbins says is like lasting fulfillment is ways you can contribute and ways that you can grow. So 
take that to the bank for you. I'll see you in the next video.